everyone, today we're going to be creating one brand new kit for every Splatoon 3 weapon. Some quick ground rules. We are not going to be including any subs or specials already confirmed for the weapon. So for example, Gluga has Wall and Booyah Bomb, therefore the kit we give it today could not have either of those two specials. Basically the same way it's worked in the previous games. The two exceptions are Aerospray, which has Booyah Bomb on its second kit, and Sorrel Undercover, which has Inkstorm on its second kit. So for those, we'll just be picking a new sub. I will have the already existing subs and specials listed in the corner, so you could easily tell what which ones were not able to be chosen. I'll be doing a brief explanation of why I chose the kit I did and if it's based off of something, what I based it off of. Without any further ado, subscribe if you want to see more and let's get started. First up is the sploosh matic Now, I think that the kit it has in the game already, the curling ultra stamp one, is near perfect. I decided to keep Splat Bomb since it's had it in both games and go with the Reef Slider. I'll get this out of the way now. I put Reef Slider on a bunch of the super short range weapons because I think it's perfect for closing the gap and really helps a lot of those weapons out. For your Splatter Shot Jr., I decided to give it Auto Bomb because I think that works pretty well for it in Splatoon 2 since you get two of them on a full ink tank and go with Wave Breaker to be similar to the Echo Locator it had in Splatoon 1. I think it could play off the special really well and would be a super weird support weapon, which is usually what Custom Jr. is anyway. I decided to give Aerospray Burst Bomb because I think that kit in Splatoon 2 works perfectly for it anyway and I see no reason to change it. splash I really liked having Zipcaster in the second trailer and since it got taken away from it, I decided to give it back for the second kit in this case, the Neo Splash. Torpedo is also good for comboing and for poking weapons at a distance, so I think it works very well with the weapon. So I wanted to give Splatter Shot a supportive kit because obviously it's had both Wasabi and Kensa Splatter Shot in the first two games, but I didn't really want to give it a special it could use as far away, so I decided to go with Big Bubbler for a supportive one that requires it to move a bit further forward. I also think Big Bubbler is a supportive special that can be easily turned into an aggressive hybrid since you can use it to protect yourself or give jumps further in, so I think it works really well here. I gave it Auto Bomb because Inner Agent 3 has permanently pictured Splatter Shot with Auto Bomb in my mind. So originally I wanted to base 52 off of its kit in Splatoon 2, the one with Curling and Stingray, but Killer Whale is already on the first one, so I decided to give it Ultra Stamp. I think you could use the Curling and then pop the Ultra Stamp to be able to follow the trail, which could have some cool synergy, and I like Curling on 52 anyway, so I think this kit works for it. And Zap is a very old reference. If you're a Splatoon 1 fan, you will know this is the same kit it had in that game, with Splat Bomb for a slightly different bomb, and the Echo locator special. I think the ability to do a little bit of extra damage will make this even better than it was in the first game and could be a really useful weapon. I decided to give Splatter Shop Pro the best tools I could to help with its painting and damage capability, as it being a two-shot is really helpful for it and its mobility and paint are just kind of average. In general, I think this main weapon just needs buffs, but Fizzy allows it to move around or to combo and it can help for charging an ink storm, which is really useful for Splatter Shop Pro to use. 96 Gal is the same as the last time I did my kit predictions things. This is based off of the Splatoon 196 deco with a wall and aggressive special. I think this would be amazing for it. I really like the 96 kit we currently have. It's great for support. I just wanted to have this other playstyle option as well. For Jet Squelcher, I wanted to give it Burst Bomb again because I really like Burst Bomb with Jet Squelcher and think it allows it to be more aggressive. And for the special, I decided to go with Tacticooler. I think the special would force it to move forward a little bit, but not too much. It would be nice as a supportive option and the ability to boost your own speed in combination with the Burst Bomb could allow C Jet to be really aggressive when it has its special up, which can be really fun to play. L3! I decided to just keep the L3 kit in Splatoon 2. It's really iconic. It works amazingly for it, especially since we don't have damage up with it anymore. I really don't have much else to say. Like, this has been the best kit L3 has ever gotten, so why not just keep it? H3 is another Splatoon 1 reference, in this case being the Cherry H3. I think it would be a really interesting, and the two protection specials could help it be much more aggressive, which for a slow weapon like H3 is really important for it. For Squeezer, I decided to change the bomb out to Suction Bomb. This is kind of an indirect nerf, but it also helps it deal with objects and it's not really that much of a downgrade from Splat Bomb and Ink Storm to help with its painting capability, so it could be a bit more versatile than it is in Splatoon 2. For the Carbon Roller, I decided to give it its Splatoon 1 kit. Once again, Burst Bomb and Trizuka is amazing for it. It helps it deal with long range threats and it also is super good synergy because the Burst Bomb works super well with Zuka by allowing it to paint its feet. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, Normal Roller has the best kit this thing has ever had and I don't don't think we can top it, but this is the closest we can do. Fizzy can still be used as a painting trail that it can go through, but can also be used to poke, and Reef Slider can really help it get up close, giving it the same kind of practicality that the Crack On kit does in both Splatoon 1 and 2. The Flingza Roller is going to have Auto Bomb and Tacticooler. This is another supportive kit. The base Flingza Roller has Missile, so it looks like the devs do want to go the support route with this weapon, and I think this would be a really healthy kit for it. And I really like Auto Bomb to be able to poke people behind corners.
fingers, revealing them so you can use your vertical flick for damage. For Dynamo Roller, I decided to give it a different kit than last time with the Curling Bomb to help its mobility out, though it wouldn't be useful for painting walls like Sprinkler would, so it would have some downsides. And I decided to go with Ink Vacuum. The current one has Tacticooler, so I think this would be a nice supportive route. And Curling Bomb Vacuum would go really well together since you could use the Curling Bomb to get up close and then use your vacuum to protect people rather than having to rely on the slow speed of the main weapon. So Squiffer's up. For this video, I'm going to assume the Game Explained kits are real just so I can introduce a few more variety here. And in this case, this means I can't do Angle Shooter or Big Bubbler. I decided to copy over the Fresh Squiffer because I really like its ability to poke behind corners, AoE, and being able to play alternate angles, which is really useful for the weapon. Splash Charger is based off the Fire Fin. Splash Wall could be really useful for protecting you when you do your triple ink strike. And in general, Wall allows this weapon to be very aggressive. I gave E-Leader the custom kit because I think Burst Bomb will be on the normal one considering it has Wave Breaker, which is basically Echo. I think that kit is very based off the Splatoon 1 one. So here's our really weird kit. We have Beacon for giving jumps to teammates because I think that does have some usefulness and Zip Caster. While you wouldn't get many shots, you could play a super odd angle and force people to move around corners. I think it would actually be really useful and I kind of want to see it in the game. Think of it like an Overwatch Widow Grapple, except you get potential potentially two of them if you're okay sacrificing one of your shots. All right, so now that we know Bamboozler players do not have damage up anymore, I think it's safe to say they can get their burst bomb back. I also decided to give it Killer Whale 5.1 to help displace long range weapons or do chip damage so it can help one tap people a bit better. So I have no idea what they did with GooTuber. I decided to go with Fizzy Bomb just to have a sub that would carry it and Ultra Stamp to help in close range. The sub and special have some synergy just like Curly stamp I've mentioned before, but I still hope this weapon has some new things to it or it's going to be bad. So I think Slosher's base kit is really good. This one is based off a long forgotten kit, the Bucket Deco in Splatoon 1, which had Splash Wall and Kraken. I think the Reef Slider could be really useful for getting up close to people and you could probably combo with a weak hit from the explosion and the wall could be useful for fighting in more open areas. Tri Slosher is literally just the kit from Splatoon 2. There is very little to add to it, but I do like the beacon utility if you get set up on some high high ground, being able to give jumps to teammates there could be even more useful. So I'm very confident that the first sloshing machine should get fizzy bomb since it has inkjet. I really like that kit. So instead, I wanted to go with a supportive kit for the machine. Angle Shooter should do enough damage to be able to combo with the main weapon. The location could be useful over walls, and Tacticooler would be really nice for buffing its mobility since it has a really good strafe speed that would make it really hard to hit. Explo is the same kit I gave it last time. I didn't want to give it anything that could help its paint because it's really good in zones and weaker on the other modes. I think Beacon would be really useful for the aggressive comps it likes to play with, and Whale 5.1 could be really useful for allowing your team to move forward or dealing with longer range threats. Blob is the same kit as last time as well. I still think Inkvine is amazing for defending yourself, and Blob doesn't really have a hard time poking when it doesn't have map control. The location could be really useful for hitting over walls, and Vacuum should secure it as a supportive weapon that would move forward to help its team. I think this is a super healthy and interesting kit for the weapon. It's still one of my favorites. Please give it to Blob. Mini Splatling is based off of Zimmy from Splatoon 1. I debated giving it Burst Bomb, but there were just other combinations with Burst Bomb I liked better. I think it would be able to strafe in and out of Big Bubbler super well, so I really like it. For Heavy Spotling, I wanted to give it options to deal with chargers, because that's something the base Heavy Spotling kit does not do. Splash Wall would obviously allow you to protect yourself, and the Ink Vacuum could eat charger shots or help it be more supportive when helping its team. So, Hydra would be able to missile to deal with longer range threats, but wouldn't output it too much, and it would help with the Ink Tank refill, while Sprinkler would give it more consistent paint and a way to paint its feet if it needs to escape quickly. This is a very solid utility kit, and I think it wouldn't output too many missiles and therefore not be too annoying. Ball Point is the hybrid of its Splatoon 2 kit. I wanted to give it something more aggressive. The beacon works for it amazingly, but I wanted to give it something to really solidify. Yeah, this is the backline that will flank you and rush you down. So I think Inkjet works super well, and it's something Ball Point players already have experience with. For Nautilus, I wanted to give it a cheaper bomb so it could use it more often, and I think knowing where people are behind corners could be useful. And I decided to give it Trizuka because I think that would be a good special for dealing with longer range weapons, which is something Nautilus struggles with. So Luna Blaster already got Splat Bomb, and I think the easy choice for its second kit would be Fizzy Bomb. It would help it move forward while still being a good combo option. And Reef Slider, like I mentioned before, 
is amazing for getting close range weapons in, and I think for Luna would work super, super well. This kit might even be better than the Splatoon 2 Vanilla Luna Blaster, which is currently the best kit it's ever gotten. I still stand by that I think Clash Blaster should get Burst Bomb, but I think it should be on the kit with Crab Tank. Also, Clash has been seen with a Burst Bomb in 3.0, and Clash players got robbed. I just have to put that out there. So for this one, I gave it a more supportive hybrid. The Splat Bomb is useful for poking, and the Tana Missiles can be used to displace people. Like with Hydra, it wouldn't get a high missile output, and I think this would work much better since Splat Bomb is good with this weapon. It was just also stuck with Stingray in Splatoon 2. Blaster, I also decided to give Fizzy Bomb. We'll be seeing a bit of bomb overlap because I think this class is so important to get lethal sub weapons, except for Rapid Pro, which I'll get to later. Trizuka would also have exceptional synergy with the sub weapon since you could use the Fizzy Bomb to paint your feet and move around, and I think Blaster having a long range special like Inkjet or Zuka just fits with it super well. Now, I know this kit is on Luna Blaster, but listen, okay? I want this kit, please. It would be fun. Come on, Nintendo, please. Okay, so this is still the Crapid kit. I am going with the same logic as last time where the normal Rapid gets the more aggressive kit and the Rapid Pro gets the more supportive kit. And Crapid was way too fun. I want to have it back. And this is basically a fixed baller. As for Rapid Pro, however, I think that weapon has been dying to get Beacon for a long time. It's super perfect with how it likes to position, could work better with backline comps. And I decided to give it Booyah Bomb so it could help counter other specials and be used to protect itself for slightly more aggressive plays at times. I think this would be a really fun supportive Rapid kit and hot take, I don't think the Splatoon 2 Rapid Pro kits are very fun at all for their playstyle. Ink Brush is based off the Nouveau kit. Mines can be really useful when you set up and get behind enemy lines, making you a nuisance to take down and Big Bubbler can protect yourself and with how far ahead you get, being able to give jumps to teammates could be incredibly useful for it. As for Octobrush, I can now make a kit based off the Splatoon 1 one. Normally I wouldn't be able to because it needs a bomb to poke, but this new special is so good at getting in that I think it will actually work okay with Octobrush, and you could farm the special to get behind enemy lines and set up beacons. Dapple Dooley desperately needs a way to get back in. I'll keep Torpedo that's on the clear kit because it has some combo potential and I really like it for poking, and Reef Slider will just be what this weapon has needed from day one. I think it'll be huge to give Dapples a mobility special. I think the vanilla Splat Dooley kit with Suction Crab Tank is amazing, so I decided to just go with the End Parry kit from Splatoon 2 because I think it's just one of the most fun kits in the game, and I think it would work really well in this game, arguably better than it does in Splatoon 2. As for Dooley Squatchers, I decided to give them a supportive kit with Ink Mine to help combo with the main weapon and help with setups, and Tactic Cooler to give speed buffs for your team, which I think would be especially helpful with how this weapon switches from supportive to aggressive really easily. For Gluga Dooleys, I decided to give them back their Fizzy Bomb, but rather than trying to make it a support which doesn't work for the weapon, we're gonna pair it with Inkjet. This is a mishmash of the Kensa Gluga and Vanilla Gluga kit from Splatoon 2. I honestly think the Fizzy and Inkjet also has some cool synergy where you can throw the Fizzy first to clear people or damage them and then follow up with an Inkjet, and being able to have angles and mobility is something Gluga can really use. Tetra Dooley already got the special that helps it get in with its normal kit, so what can I do better? Probably Zipcaster. This would be one of the better Zipcaster weapons of the game. I think it would also be very useful, and I decided to give it Curling Bomb to enhance its mobility even further in this case. I am still giving Splatbrella Torpedo Ink Vacuum. I think this weapon is going to be the supportive route, especially with the kit we know it has already, and this one would be great for it, giving it multiple sources of damage or things you would have to shoot down. Alright everyone, this is the scariest kit out of anything I made today. Squid Beacon is obviously useful for it and can get its teammates in, but think about it for a little bit and you'll realize how scary Wave Breaker is with a tent umbrella. Imagine a tent setting up to hold an area, except now instead of having to deal with just the shield, it can locate you and force you to jump over its beams. This is such good area denial, and you can use it fast to refill your ink tank. It would be so useful. Under Cover Brella is stuck with Ink Storm, so I'm ditching the Burst Bomb on it because I think Burst Bomb would be if you want this weapon to be aggressive. If we're going the support route, Torpedo works well with it and can get assist to help regen the shield, and I think it would pair well with Ink Storm because they both can apply chip damage. All right, so I have a Tri Stringer and Splatana analysis scripted. You guys will have to stay tuned for that. It'll be a future upload. But something I've established as being really important in that video is comboing with chip damage, as the shots do low damage, but there are multiple of them and they have explosions. So I think Burst Bomb would be super useful for it and help its mobility. I also think Reef Slider would be perfect for it. This is an aggro bow kit. We are going full force on this one. I think the Splatana's base kit is also very good, and I'm not sure what you can do to help its combo potential since the other one has Burst Bomb. So instead, we're going to be playing into the mobility here with Fizzy Bomb, though that can also help 
shift damage and inkjet so it can play better angles and actually have some range. Finally, with the Splatana Stamper, I decided to give it Splat Bomb for a good all-rounder and Killer Whale 5.1. Considering this is the heavyweight one, it will probably have better damage that could be near a one-shot and the chip damage from Killer Whale should really help with that. All right though, everyone, that's my kits. Let me know what kind of stuff you want to see in the comments and I can't wait to see how many of these get in the game. Thanks for watching.